Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to our next installment of Crafting History. Today we are doing embroidering festive felt ornaments with our curator of collections, Jackie Kane, facilitating. My name is Maria Mears and I am the director of adult education here. And we are really excited to be bringing you another Crafting History event. Um, for those of you that haven't done our programs before, Crafting History is a series of um, different historic crafts. And we'd like to give people a little bit of historic context if we can, and then teach you all a craft that has been passed down for generations. And we also have a focus on sustainability as well. So all of our crafts are meant to be something that we can do with our hands and not have stuff that just goes into a landfill. That's our ultimate goal. Um, so we are live streaming this, just so everyone's aware. So um, if you have something to say, if you wanna talk to the group, I might put this microphone on your face because unless you're speaking into a mic, the people that are joining us virtually cannot hear you. So just be aware of that. Um, and we would like to give a special thank you to our live stream sponsor, WGLT, Bloomington Normal's public media, part of the NPR network. So thank you, WGLT, for letting us do this. Um, but yeah, so without further ado, I'm going to let Jackie take us away, and she will do a basic, um, teaching you the basic stitches, and then you'll have some time to do a little free design for your ornament. So go for it, Jackie. All right. So we're going to do a real kind of quick history of embroidery. Um, most of this is just to give you some context of why we're doing this for crafting history. Uh, embroidery has been around for thousands of years. It's been seen in almost every single culture uh, across the world. The earliest signs of embroidery trace back to 5th century BCE, uh, so very, very old. Um, a lot of time in the past it's been seen as women's work, it's been seen as not an art form because it was classified as domestic labor. And one of the things that we're doing here is trying to kind of reclaim that and say that no, it is an art form, it takes skill, it takes artistic design. And you can see that a lot through these crazy quilts, which I have an example of here, uh, that would use these intricate embroidery designs, beautiful stitches and have been passed down through tons of families uh, and just really appreciated for that beauty. Um, and this is one of my personal favorite uh, types of embroidery that you see that gets passed down as an art form. Um, usually I will say that it is done by more upper class women because they are the people who had the time to be able to sit around all day and do fancy stitches on quilts. Um, and one of the things we're talking about today is also samplers. So samplers have been used uh, for many generations to teach new stitches as an educational tool for young women. Um, and we're really excited to actually make our own little samplers today. Uh, oh, there we go, <laughs> word it died. So today we're doing these little samplers. They have four sections because we're learning four basic stitches. Some of you may have learned these stitches before. We're doing real basics with a running stitch, a back stitch, a satin stitch, and a French knot. I will give a disclaimer that you only have to learn one stitch today to be able to do an ornament. So if you can do a running stitch, then you can make an entire ornament. So don't worry if the French knot is something that really freaks you out. I wanted to give a couple of options for all different levels of embroiderers today. Um, so together, we're only gonna work through the first row of our stitches. So these little rows right here, one box and a couple of dots. You're gonna be able to take the sampler home and you can practice these stitches more on your own and uh, complete the full sampler. It'll look something like this. This is my <laughs> practice one that I completed. Um, but today we're just kind of gonna go over a few of them together. I want you guys to have plenty of time to be able to design your ornaments and really uh, have some creativity with that. So, like I said, if you're familiar with any of these stitches, feel free to move ahead. <laughs> if you get a little bored, you can complete more of your sampler. Um, but we're gonna go over all the basics for anyone who doesn't know. So, we are starting with our first stitch, the running stitch today, but to do that, we have to set up our uh, samplers. So you have your little sampler piece. Uh, <laughs> my group over here is good to go, I can see. But for those of you who don't know, you're going to unscrew this top little screw and you're gonna pop these two apart 
like this. The piece that does not have a screw on it is gonna go underneath your fabric. Let me learn how to do this. So what you're gonna wanna do is you have a circle on your sampler and you are going to want to line that circle up the best of your ability on this under piece and you're gonna put this piece with the screw on top. And they're gonna kind of snap together. If it's not fitting, you can always loosen it a little bit and that will help. Um, this is gonna do something called putting your fabric under tension. So the more tension you have on the fabric, the easier it is to have even stitches. So once you get your piece on, you can tighten it up a little bit if you want. And if it feels a little too loose, you can give a tiny little tug in the corners. But I would be cautious, if you pull too hard, you will pull it out of the frame. Um, which is not bad for anything, it's just a little shocking because your frame will go flying, so. So once you've got it all done, you can kind of do a tap test. It should kind of feel a little bit like a drum. Uh, you hear a little thunk coming from it. All right, so our next part is gonna be threading the needle. So, this is the fun part. You get to come up and pick out whatever embroidery threads you'd like for this. Um, so we have a couple of ones. I will pass the box around. Uh, this is just for your little sample, so you can just pick whichever color speaks to you. <laughs> uh, there you go. So you'll have a chance to pick more embroidery threads and to pick, <laughs> and to pick um, your felt colors when you start designing your actual ornaments. For now, just pick a color that you like. I'd recommend not doing white on white, but <laughs> it's up to you, it's your sampler. <laughs> okay, so our first step here is you're gonna take off the little ends and you're gonna pull off a piece of string that's about 12 to 24 inches long. The shorter your thread, the easier it is to work with, but you want at least 12 inches and you're gonna give that a quick snip. So we've got our thread. Now the thing to note about store-bought embroidery thread is it's what we call six-strand embroidery thread. And today, we are gonna be embroidering with three strands of embroidery thread. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you should have your needles on a little piece of felt that's either gray or orange on your table. So you'll take your needle and you'll use the back, non-pointy side of your needle and you'll just push it in between your thread. So kind of like this. And your goal is to count out three threads. I promise this is the hardest part. <laughs> uh, so it'll split kind of right down the middle. If you look closely, you'll be able to see that it's three threads. You can technically embroider with any level if you wanna do three threads. That's what most people do. I personally use two threads. Um, and that's what I did for the piece I have on the chair. And then some people even use one strand of embroidery floss, which takes a lot of patience. <laughs> so you'll slowly pull them apart. If you put too much tension on it, then it can tangle on itself, which is never any fun. Um, but once you get that pulled apart, then you'll take those three strands that you have and you will thread it through the eye of your needle. I'm gonna check in and see how we're doing. Yeah, you guys got the three strands, good job. All right, how are we doing? <laughs> okay, that's fine. Should be six strand, they're pretty small. Two is honestly perfectly fine. <laughs> I usually like to do two uh, just normally, but uh, the goal is, is if you do all six strands, then it can uh, be a little bulky when you do like a satin stitch, so. So whenever you've got it uh, onto your needle, you're gonna double it up. So that means that you're gonna have one long piece and then one short piece that's gonna come about halfway down your long piece. So, and as you stitch, uh, you're gonna slowly kind of slide that up until it gets shorter and shorter. Uh, this allows you to have a longer piece of thread but still work with it as if it were a shorter piece of thread, so. I'm gonna take a second and pause and see if anyone has any questions at this point. Are we all feeling pretty good? 
This is my opportunity to check in with our virtual friends if they have any questions. <laughs> They'll usually notify me. Okay, so now at the end of your longest piece, you're gonna tie a knot. Uh, and you can do whatever knot you prefer. Um, a double knot usually is the best one. I do what's called a quilter's knot, um, which is just a fancy way of wrapping it around the needle, <laughs> but I would recommend just tying a normal knot, um, just like you tie your shoelaces. <laughs> Okay, so quick show of hands, who has their needles threaded and their knots tied? Okay. Just one second, I think we've got a few people still, still working through. Okay, so now that we have our needles threaded and our knots tied, we're gonna start with our running stitch. So to start with our running stitch, you'll see a quarter of your pie that is labeled running stitch. <laughs> um, and you're gonna go on that first line, you're gonna take your needle and you're working bottom to top. So you're gonna go underneath and it's gonna be in that very first line and you're gonna pull through so that it's on the front. I don't have the little lines on mine, <laughs> so it's harder to follow, but. <laughs> okay, so bottom uh, to top, pull through at the start of that line and then about one grain of rice away, you're going to push it down and form your first stitch. I'm gonna check on people, because once we get through the, the first one, it gets a lot easier, okay. So from the bottom, you're gonna, at the start of this line right here, you're gonna push up, push through, and go down, perfect. Sorry, I couldn't see the purple. <laughs> I couldn't see it compared to the black. So, and then one grain length away, you're gonna go back down. So your goal is that you create a nice little dashed line, um, as you can see, and you'll form a straight line going all the way across with little tiny dashes. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, you're doing perfect, okay. <laughs> yes, and the goal is to keep your stitches as even as you can and the space between your stitches as even as you can. I'm noticing that doing this upside down <laughs> without looking at it is not making very even stitches. So you'll have to forgive me for that. And I know. <laughs> so, so you're just gonna do that first row, trying to get comfortable with your spacing and your tension. You don't wanna pull it too tight. You want it just where it kind of fits snug, a little little tiny tug so that it lays flat, but not tugging so hard that it's warping the fabric. So the running stitch is actually what I would call the foundation of all hand sewing, embroidery or not. So if you ever need to fix a hem on your skirt or you ever need to fix a quick tear, a running stitch is always a great way to do that. Um, so you're not only learning embroidery today, you're learning basic tailoring skills also. <laughs> so once you get to the end of your line, then we're gonna move to the next little uh, pie piece. <laughs> I have no idea what to call them. The next little pie piece, and that is gonna be our back stitch. So I'll give everyone a second to get there. I want us to feel all nice and comfortable with this stitch. They do, we get slowly more complicated as we go. So if you get to a point and you say, you know what, I'm good with a running stitch and a back stitch, that is okay. <laughs> you can do your best attempt. Um, but like I said earlier, as long as you can master the running stitch, then you can design an entire ornament. <laughs> yeah, very straight, very nice. Okay, so it looks like we are doing pretty good. So, 
we are gonna go ahead and move on to the back stitch. So I'm gonna draw a little line on my piece so it's easier for people to follow along with me. All right, so moving to your next little pie piece, we are gonna start the back stitch. It starts the exact same way as the running stitch. So you're gonna come up from behind on that little line and pull through. And then one grain length away, you're gonna go back down and pull through. So, so far we're exactly like the running stitch. <laughs> and then one grain length away from your last stitch, just like the running stitch, you're gonna come back up. And this is where it gets a little bit different. Instead of continuing with a dashed line, you are actually gonna go down into the stitch behind you. So I'm gonna put this so that people can see mine. So you have your little dashed, and that's why it's called the back stitch, because you basically just work backwards. So we did the first little stitch, and then you come forward. Are you continuing in the same hole as your goal? In the same hole as your goal, yes. So, yes, there is one called a stem stitch. Okay. Oh, that's much more advanced than I was today. But. Mm -hmm. And it's often used for flower stems. Um, yes, so you've got. Mm -hmm. So you're going to go. Yep, you're going to go right down there. And then you come up. Yes, you're, you're doing the advanced. Yes, you're exactly right. That's exactly. You're doing the advanced where you only work on the top. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> I personally agree also, but it's easier to teach the front to the back. So we're gonna continue to work our way down our back stitch line. Uh, as you get a little quicker, you may notice that you get a tiny little knot uh, in your thread. This is called a tension knot. So if it's a little bitty loop, just take your needle and actually tug on that loop a little bit and it'll undo the tension knot. Uh, so if you do get a little tiny knot in your thread while you're sewing, let me know and I'll show you exactly where to tug. And that way you don't have to re-thread your entire needle, which can be time consuming. <laughs> it's the beauty of the back stitch. <laughs> So, and the back stitch is again, like the hand stitch, what we would call a structural stitch. So if you are ever needing to sew up a seam on a pair of pants that might have ripped, the back stitch is what you will use for that. Because it's much stronger <laughs> than the running stitch. It's the precursor to the sewing machine stitch. <laughs> this is what all tailors used to use. <laughs> These are not very even upside down. I'm just, <laughs> I'm trying to keep it like <laughs> even in case they want to see. So uh, most of you probably aren't there, but if you're starting to notice that your thread is getting a little bit towards the end, then we're going to actually go ahead and tie off. So if you have less than about four inches of thread, usually that's about when you want to tie off that thread and get a new piece. So on the back of your work, what you're going to do is you're going to find just a stitch that you have, and you're just gonna push your needle through that, and it'll create a little tiny loop. And then you're just gonna catch that loop with your needle, and that's how you tie off. It's a very simple knot, you just tie it onto, ooh, gotta stay out of the, the light of my projector here. Yeah, so you just catch one of the stitches on the back, like this, it creates this tiny little loop, and you just catch that little loop, and it creates a nice little knot that will hold that into place. And then you can just snip it, uh, snip your thread. And it's good to go. And then the same as before, you'll thread your needle with the other half of your uh, six strand embroidery thread. That's why it's always good to keep both halves. <laughs> Make sure embroidery thread go twice as far.
All right, so a quick show of hands. Is anyone through both the running stitch and the back stitch? Okay, got a few. We'll give everyone else a second to catch up. For those of you who are through, if you'd like to continue down the sampler and do some of the different shapes, it's a good opportunity to practice having to navigate those stitches in something that's not a straight line because the straight line is always going to be the easiest to do. So, yes. I have a question on how you mm -hmm. uh, tie off stitch. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm down here now. What do I do? So you're just going to thread through one of those little stitches that you have before. Right mm -hmm. there? Yep. And you're just going to push that through, and you're going to catch that little loop. So you're going to go back through that loop. Like this? Mm -hmm. And then you're just going to pull it tight, and that will secure it. And then you, yep, you leave about one centimeter. Uh, it's, it's good. Yeah, and really you can use whatever knot you're comfortable with. And that's the one I was taught because you can do it with the least amount of thread on your needle. So, because uh, you don't have to double knot anything. So yeah, you can always tie off with whatever knot you feel comfortable with, um, whatever, whatever floats your boat. And if any of our virtual participants have any questions, you can always put them in the chat and we have someone who's monitoring that. So please feel free. Yes, I know it can be a little tricky if you're not here in person being able to see the up close stitches. So we will do the best that we can to explain it. Okay, so we're gonna move on to our next stitch because uh, we're making some great progress. So we are only gonna do one of the little boxes that you see listed under satin stitch and that's because the satin stitches take the most time and the most thread. Um, and I like to explain satin stitches as basically a coloring page for stitching. So for your little box, you're gonna take your thread and again, working back to front, you are gonna come in at the very bottom left-hand corner. So your goal here is that you're gonna create parallel lines that go all the way across this little square to create um, one seamless look. So one of the examples I'm gonna pass. This is my previous sampler. You can see how these lines all line up to create little parallel lines. So you've gone in the bottom corner, so you're gonna go into the top left-hand corner and pull your stitch through. And that's your first long, nice little line. And once you've done that, you're gonna go back to the bottom. Again, from the back, you're gonna come forward as close to that first stitch as possible. And then you're gonna go to the top as close to that second stitch. So you're basically just drawing little lines. So it's, oh, sorry, I lost my back there. So you're going, yeah, down to top, or so bottom to top, and then on the back you do loop around and then go bottom to top. That's, I'm sorry, I should not have shown you the back of that. I do that slightly differently. There, we are looping around, it's easier. Um, sometimes I do a version that doesn't have the loop in the back because it saves on embroidery threads. So. as much in the back. Uh, but one of the things that this is great for is if you ever have like a tear in your jeans or you wanna darn a hole, um, this can be a great stitch to kind of help provide more strength to that. Um, so yeah, your goal is you're basically just coloring in the shape. Once you get through a few of these lines, you will definitely see that this is the most time consuming of the stitches. Um, but it has a really pretty effect. If you find that your threads aren't laying flat, you can give them just kind of a little bitty stroke with your needle, just go over the top of them. Um, I tend to use my little hole punch to do that. But yeah, this is why we are only doing one little square together for this. <laughs> Now 
Yeah, so you're good, your tension, you just wanna uh, not pull it too tight. You could also try to pull on the corners of your piece. Sometimes if it gets a little loose, it can cause the fabric to warp. Tension is definitely the hardest part of this because uh, if you pull a little too hard, then it uh, can cave in. And if you put too much of a gap between the threads, then you can see the light behind it. Um, but if that happens, just go back in and fill it in. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the back of your piece looks like as long as the front looks pretty. So <laughs> that's what I was always told. <laughs> Cross stitchers will not agree with me. <laughs> All right, how are we doing? That's okay. I've already taught you once. <laughs> so one of the goals is you want to make sure that you cover the full shape that's drawn. Uh, so always going a little bit above where the drawing is. This is, yeah, no, you're just gonna have to cut that out, I'm sorry. <laughs> Nine times out of 10, I can untangle something for you. <laughs> so you'll find that you go through the most thread for this one, and tying off is exactly the same as tying off before, where you just catch a little one of your stitches, um, or do whatever method you prefer for tying off. So I would say knowing how to do these three stitches, the running stitch, the back stitch, and the satin stitch, can let you do most embroidery designs that are out there. Um, if I remember correctly, this whole piece that I did a week ago is entirely done with satin stitches and running stitches. I think there's a few chain stitches at the bottom that I threw in, but about 20 hours, I'd say. Yeah. Yes, I, I did 20 hours straight, it was a marathon. <laughs> but, no, that's a design that I created. It's called uh, Jacoby and Cruel Work. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, one of the pieces that I'm working on. Not often do I do uh, embroidery that is meant to be art. Oftentimes I'm fixing pants, things that need to be done, more of what we talked about before, that domestic idea, um, which I think all of those are art, but this one was specifically designed for a wall in my house, so. <laughs> um, so what I did is I actually designed it and drew it on my iPad, which is a lighted back source, and then I turned the piece upside down and traced it with um, a pencil. Uh, but there's several methods you can use to do that kind of thing. There is a um, material called Stick and Stitch, which is a printable sticker. So you print your design, you cut it out, you put it on top of the fabric, stitch over top of it, and then when you expose it to water, it dissolves. So if you're wanting to embroider, hand embroider a sweatshirt, or I've seen people do it for Converse's and other types of shoes, um, that's a great option because it allows you to get um, the design perfect. <laughs> you don't have to worry about tracing, you don't have to worry about your lines fading, and then you just put it underwater and it's good to go. <laughs> I've seen people do tote bags, I've seen them do hats before. Um, I do a lot of aprons in my own time. I like to put my name on everything. <laughs> and that's one of the things that I think a back stitch is best for, because uh, you can just write something in your own handwriting, and then just stitch over top. Um, and I used to have a friend who had her grandparents every year write a message on Christmas on an ornament, and she'd stitch over top of it in their handwriting, and then it got preserved, and it was a really sweet thing. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and take some time and try and learn our last stitch, which is the French knot, which I would say is the definite most difficult stitch we're gonna attempt today. 
Um, but once you master it, it can create some really pretty detail work um, and some nice texture. So it's this raised little bit that you see these little dots. So what we're gonna do, and I've got a diagram up here that can also help with this stitch because it's a little bit more complex. You are gonna go on your dot from the back to the front, pull your stitch in. I'm actually gonna do one demonstration over here and then one on that table so that you guys can see a little bit more up close. So you're gonna take your needle and you are gonna wrap this around three times. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna put that needle right back to where it was before, keeping tension with your left hand on this extra stitch until you get it through. And then you slowly pull through and it creates a cute little knot. <laughs> and you can see these <laughs> knots, you can use them to create whole shapes and it gives a lot of depth and texture to what you're working on. Um, it's a little hard to do. Oh, oh, beautiful, perfect, you're good to go, you don't even need me. <laughs> All right, so for our French knot, you're going to push up. You did them actually perfectly. Yeah. Nothing else on your sampler is done. <laughs> so pulling from the back, oh yeah, no, you guys, okay, you're the only one who doesn't have a French knot, so I will show you how to do it. Uh, so <laughs> you just wrap it around the needle three times and then you push it right back in, keeping tension on this second hand. Uh -huh. Once you get it in, you can drop the tension a little bit, and then you pull through. Nice. So for our virtual people, I will try and explain this a little bit. So you're gonna push from the back all the way to the front. You're gonna hold your string with one hand. This is very hard to do virtually. <laughs> and you're going to wrap it three times around your needle and put your needle right back where your stitch started, trying to keep a little bit of tension on your needle and you're gonna pull it tight and it's gonna make a tiny little knot. Um, I would recommend looking more at my diagram <laughs> to learn how to do this if you're virtual instead of looking at what I'm doing, it's gonna make much more sense to you. And after this event, I will be sending the slides out to the participants. So if you're virtual and you want a closer look, you will get those afterwards. Yeah. All right. So does anyone have any questions so far on their little samplers that they've done? Any stitches they want clarified? I can also clarify stitches throughout the process, but I want to go ahead and get you started on designing your felt ornaments. So. We have a couple of fun different things for designing ornaments today. We have our whole box of embroidery thread and we have all of this fun different felt. I have a couple of examples on my table that I've done before. Um, we have some cookie cutters here to help you get some different shapes. So I've got a few that I made um, out of different cookie cutter shapes. So I've got some stars here that you can use to draw the shapes if you want. Uh, or do some little Christmas trees, if you would like. Um, I've got some little gingerbread men, so I did some little cookie ones, um, if you'd like to do something like that. There is markers and paper on each of your tables so that you can design out and test some designs before you have to actually start stitching. <laughs> process. Like I said, if you want to draw it out, we have paper, but if you want to just launch straight into making it out of felt, the best thing about embroidery is if you don't like it, you just tear the stitches out. So, all right. Yes. That, yes, so what you'll do is you'll remove what you have and you can always put your sampler back in later and then you'll take one of these sheets, any color you want, put it in, you can use that to outline as long as it fits within your six inch hoop um, and then do all the stitches you want and when you're done, you'll take your scissors, cut out the outline and cut out a back for it um, and then we'll stuff it with some polyfill which I have hidden behind our rooms. <laughs> to give them a little bit more of a plump look to them. So actually, yeah, I can sit. Yeah, so your first step is gonna be to 
pick your colors of felt and pick your colors of thread. If you don't finish your piece today, you can always take these materials home with you. The bamboo hoop, so there's the peak light. Yeah, the bamboo hoop is yours to keep along with your needle, um, the thread that you pick and the felt that you pick for your uh, piece. The one thing we ask that you return if you're in person is your scissors. <laughs> uh, but everything else is yours to take with you. Um, so we're just gonna begin some time working on designing. Feel free to ask any questions, chit chat amongst yourselves if you want. You don't have to sit in silence. If any of our virtual people have questions, feel free to ask them now. We'll do the best we can to answer. Okay. Maria has reminded me, if you liked the way that the beads looked on this piece, we do have some fun multicolored beads that you can sew on. Um, it basically is just like a running stitch. You come up from the back, thread a bead on, and then go back down. <laughs> and that is how you attack the bead. <laughs> All right. Just special for our virtual people, we're gonna real quick go over how to finish your ornament. Um, so once you've done all of your embroidery and you've gotten exactly how you want it, you will pop it out of your hoop that you have. 
and you'll cut out the shape that you want it to be in. So you can have it in whatever shape you want. You can have a circle, or you can cut out the individual shapes that you drew, just making sure that all of your embroidery is encompassed. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna cut out a second shape that matches that first shape to be the back, because you're gonna sandwich those two pieces together. Uh, and when you do that, you're gonna line them up, and you're gonna do a very tiny running stitch around three-fourths of the edge of the uh, ornament. So you should have a tiny little gap at the top. And that tiny little gap is where you can put your string, if you would like to hang it by string, or if you'd like to hang it by ribbon, whatever your hanging method is, that's where you'll put that. And this is also when you're gonna go ahead and stuff your ornament if you'd like to. So for those of us who are remote, we would recommend taking the remainder of the felt that you have and cutting it into small confetti pieces and using that to stuff your ornament. It's a great way to use all of your little scraps and to fill out the little guys that you create. Um, so this one is stuffed. You'll stuff them all down into the little corners and then you will, once it's all stuffed, you'll finish with a nice little running stitch around the top to close it all up. And that is how you're going to be able to finish all of your ornaments. You add a little string for hanging, uh, you are good to go. And they are ready to go on your tree. So I'm gonna pass it off to Maria. She's gonna do some quick closing remarks, but for those who are here in person, you can continue to work. We have plenty of time. Yeah, so to our virtual participants, thank you so much for logging on and crafting with us. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me. Um, there, my contact information should be on the registration, but I will, again, be sending out all the slides to everyone that participated so you can go back and look. This live stream will also be uploaded to our YouTube channel, so you will be able to go back and refer to it later. Um, Thank you again to WGLT, our sponsors, and thank you to Jackie for teaching us some really awesome crafts, as always. <laughs> so have a good night, everyone. Oh, yeah, stay tuned. This is, the, of course, it's December, so this is the last Crafting History of 2023. Stay tuned for um, February 2024. We will have lots in store again every other month, and we are excited to bring some really awesome ideas for you all. So... We'll see you in February, hopefully.